In the Bible, there is a God named Moloch, lowercase g. Moloch is spoken about in the Old Testament, Old Covenant, and also in the New Testament, New Covenant. He's talked about in both covenants. Moloch was the God in the Bible that was assigned to kill your children as a sacrifice. Maybe you wanted more money. Maybe you wanted love. Maybe you wanted fame or fortune. You sacrificed this child. Well, you may say, well, Tiffany, I'm not doing it for this. Well, if you said, I can't afford to have this baby, and you had an abortion, you sacrificed it for the money. If you say my career's really taken off and I couldn't, I can't really use a baby, you have now sacrificed your child for fame, influence, and to be well known. You did the same thing that they did in the Bible, nothing is different. With that being said, there was always a consequence to the action. All right, let's pause it right there. This is important, okay? This is very important because what essentially Tiffany is saying that most abortions are happening because people are selfishly just having casual sex and they're just having uh using abortions as birth control whereas i hear i'm hearing a lot of arguments where people say no 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 no. what if i'm raped i don't want to have the baby of someone who rapes me no 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 no. what if it's between me and the life of my child you can't take abortions away also it's my body my choice it's my body it's my choice i actually pulled some studies just to get some context on this confirmation uh from this con uh conversation a 2004 uh study from a uh, gutemer uh gutemacher i hope i'm pronouncing that right institute found that approximately four percent of women um cited health concerns either their own or the fetuses as the primary reason for seeking an abortion. So it was about 4%. Wasn't a wasn't a huge amount. And the CDC reported that in 2019, 0.2% of women obtained an abortion cited rape as the primary reason. Um, and 0.3, actually 0.3 cited incest. So it's interesting. A lot of these um, issues that's brought up is no really data to support that that's happening in large numbers. But what I want to talk about is just our abortions are is it a health care issue with our women or is it just a form of birth control now in our society and i'll start here with you ashley since i know you have limited time well we started this conversation saying that morals weren't going to be a determining factor but often when we then enter the conversation of abortion it's the first thing that people lead with so i remind my i like to be consistent I am a proponent for pro-choice, that it is a woman's right to choose, and that no person should have any say over any person's body, not a man's body and not a woman's body. And that's, um, it is a form of access to care. And we have seen since Roe v. Wade was overturned in 2020, that the amount of miscarriages that have led to women not being able to have children in the future because of the uh, one in 30 women live in a state with a, an abortion ban. It is a form of health care, it is a form of um, uh, that it needs to be accessible to people. So I am fundamentally in support of a woman's right to choose. And you make your personal choice what is right for you. We also know the story of Amber Thurman that she was beginning to have a miscarriage. And Amber, a black woman from Georgia, is no longer with us because she had to travel across state lines. She couldn't get access to care. It's also putting people, physicians, in this predicament when, they're, when their patients come in to seek health care, to see what's happening to them. They are in a state like Texas at risk of facing criminal prosecution for potentially offering care. So a lot of the consequences that people have warned about um, would happen if Roe have, has been overturned we are seeing them come to life. Melanie is right. Obama said that he was going to codify Roe. We understand you need to have a 60 vote threshold. Um, and it is very hard to codify Roe when that was still the law of the land. Many people are disappointed that he didn't do that. But the fake case of the matter is that Donald Trump overturned Roe. And to D1's point is he is talking out of two sides of his mouth on this issue. He knows that it is extremely polarizing for women White women historically have voted more um, Republican leaning, but this election we are seeing this massive gender gap because to have a constitutional right taken away from you is gutting. And so we'll see tomorrow, but we do believe that a lot of women um, are leaning towards Harris, independent Republican women because of the decision of Roe v. Wade being overturned. And that is also why we know in 2020, when so many Republicans predicted a red wave would come, it didn't happen because people were so frustrated. So I think it should be your own personal decision with you, your partner, and your doctor. And no one on this call should really have any say of what I do in my personal life. 
Wow. Anybody got anything to follow up here? I know this is a touchy subject here, and this is the okay. quietest it's been this whole time. Who, what we got? Yeah, I, I want to jump in. So the thing about abortion, like the question you just put up, Ryan, I mean, I don't think it should be banned, but I don't think it should be just you can have abortion up until the point of birth. I'm from Virginia originally. When I left, Ralph Northam just became the governor in 2018, and he was on tape talking about, well, after the baby's born, we're going to put the fetus aside and see what we're going to do with it. They're talking about abortion up until the point of birth, up until nine months. I agree with Trump when I say the three exceptions, rape, life of the mother, incest. I believe in that. There should also be like maybe a 10 week limit, maybe 10 to 15 week. I'm not an extremist person. Uh, getting rid of Roe v. Wade was good because it was no longer a federal government type thing. It's an individual state. So if you're living in California, and you want to have an abortion up until nine months and y'all want to vote for it, go ahead. You have even more access to the so-called health care that you like. And then there's no more back and forth about, OK, the federal government says this. Nope. Your state, you decide you have better control over abortion. Furthermore, what is the baby inside of you? Is it a baby or not? We can talk about my body, my choice. Well, the baby is a human being as well. Baby has a body. Furthermore, any Christian advocating for abortion just willy nilly, and it's not a healthcare issue. They cited the story, they cited the stats earlier. What, 1%, less than 1% for the three exceptions? It's usually elective. I can't afford it. I don't want to have it. I already got too many. It's like that. If you're a Christian, which I'm not, but if you are and you support that, I don't see how it makes any sense. It, I, I just don't get it. And part of the reason, you know what, D1, part of the reason why I'm not Christian is because of stuff like that, the hypocritical mm -hmm. nature of church right now. But I don't want to go too deep into that, so I digress. Can I just say one thing before I have to jump? And I'm sorry I can't wow. stay on the full time. Um, I just want to point out the conversation about the Virginia governor. Those circumstances are what we call palliative care. It's when the baby has a condition. There are, there are instances where the woman knows that the baby is not going to survive out of utero. And so they do palliative care or they uh, have to abort the, the fetus at a, at a later stage. Those are the most extreme heartbreaking cases. I did hear that clip. It was like what he said and what is actually what happens were inconsistent. It was like a bad political flub, but no one is advocating for a baby to be a day be uh, before they are birthed and for an abortion. It is literally for the care of the mother or honestly for the care of the baby who will not survive out of utero and they don't want the, the, the individual to suffer. So I do think like sometimes it's important. I know this is a heated topic, but it is also about respecting the science that exists as well um, in these instances. So. Well, well, I mean, I agree with you as far as the three instances, rape, life of the mother, incest, I agree with that. But at the same time, we got some really extreme people that say up until the point of birth. Not everyone, but that is a thing. And that's the problem is people that are just regular, normal people who don't believe in the crazy extremes and the extremists. You know what? Okay, let your state decide. If you're living in California and you want to be an extremist, and the majority of your neighbors want the same thing, then go ahead and have it. Problem solved. Ashley, what I want to do is I know you right. got to get out of here. So I want to first off thank you Absolutely. for coming on here and having this conversation <laughs> with us. Glad and, we got you today. And then I want to just roll out the red carpet to let you know you're always welcome back because these are important conversations. Obviously, we're not going to be able to, in an hour and 15 minutes, right. you know, change the world. But I, mm -hmm. there probably was a couple people listening that you were able to give a bit of understanding to, which is the purpose of this conversation. So thank you very much. And you're always welcome to come back to Harlan Initiate. OK, thank you. Bye, everyone. Absolutely. Right. What, what I want to do now, my sister Melanie here, I want to make sure I get Melanie's perspective on this conversation and, and here, especially wanna, as a woman. Correct. Then I want to address what ABL has to say to D1 regarding uh, the morality aspect of, of being a Christian. That's a very important so, yeah, conversation. So, Melanie, so, go so ahead. Melanie, so she brought up Amber Thurman. Amber Thurman didn't die because she couldn't get an abortion. She actually died from the side effects of taking the abortion pill. And she did not get the correct hospital care when uh, the, she did not expel her fetus completely. Okay, and so then they did a, had to do a DNC, but then she contracted sepsis, and that is how she died. She did not die because she had a life-threatening illness 
or something was wrong with the child. She wanted an abortion, it, the abortion pill, the side effects of it, and how the FDA has not, have they have loosened the, um, I guess the guidelines, the restrictions on this abortion medicine, and that's how she died. Actually, if you go into all the cases that they bring up, almost all of them, there's some complication from the abortion, not the actual pregnancy that is causing that. There are some cases like that, but the ones that they you talk about all the time, they automatically say that, and it's just not true. So I just, I think a lot of people just take the top headline and say, oh, she couldn't get an abortion, so that's why she died. No, she died because of her abortion. That's a very dangerous procedure, an abortion, whether it be the pill or the traditional way, where they just yank the fetus out. If you guys know how an abortion works, they literally take the fetus out like a pair of pliers and just rip it out. Now, of course, this is going to damage the woman's body, regardless whether it's the pill or a traditional abortion. So it's a very dangerous thing to do to yourself. Mel Melanie, as a, as a woman, are you open to, do you think, and back to the question that we had up here, did, do you feel like abortion should be banned? Or do you feel like, you know, there should be some level or option to, uh, to a woman being able to have an abortion? Well, this is really personal for me because my mother was raped at 14. And that's ah. how I have my oldest sister. Um, she was raped by knife point and I, I'm sorry, I don't know if I can bring that word. I don't know. I don't want it to, no, to hurt it, your it, it, Go ahead. Go fine. ahead. Hopefully, it, hopefully this your it test, does This is your testimony. So, the, so I'm actually a person who grew up like knowing this story, what happened. My mother went on to achieve and everything like that. And she could not get one at the time. She actually tried to do it herself. She was kicked out of her home and then she was taken in by nuns into a home, that's what they would find, a home of, for a confined, you know, a home of confinement. Nuns would take in young girls who were kicked out because it didn't matter if you were violated or not, the fact that you were pregnant, you were gone. And so I have a complicated history with that. Um, for me, I, I do believe it needs to go to the states. I do believe there need to be exceptions. This is my issue though most are using it as birth control they don't really want to use the birth control they they are or they're i would say they see it as the easy out like it doesn't matter i can just you know if something happened i can easily get get birth control and it won't be a problem and you see this i, I even did a video a while back where this actually probably two years ago where this rapper she was outside of planned parenthood with her friends half naked twerking talking about you know, this ninja nutting me, I'm going to kill this, you know, thing. And she actually spells it A-B-O-R-T-I-O-N, like celebrating Ugh. abortion. You hear, you know, it's become a cultural thing and it's no big deal. And so for me, it is a, it, it is disgusting and how it's been, you know, the access to it, what it has done. I do believe most states will end up voting for abortion so wow. that women can have it. I and so and I think that's the right move to make. But again, it, it, the exceptions are so small. You know what I mean? They're so small in any case they're bringing up. They're not really valid. So it's a it, it's an issue that I, I just think people, you know, killing a child is just seen as no big deal. They don't really care about it at all. And it's so preventable. It's just I don't know. Like Mel I Melanie, say, let, let me ask some stats for you because personally, it's um I think it probably hit our community the hardest as well because um when you look at the stats, I found something here that said uh the CDC reported in 2021 that black women accounted for 41.5% of abortions in the US. Um if you use that number consistently along the uh just the years, um just to try to get an estimate of how many, you know, babies that is since we were uh, allowed to have abortions, you could just estimate that, you know, we've aborted probably about 25 million black babies. And, you know, that's, um, I'm sure has an impact. Incredible. And, you know, to I have a, a similar story. My mom, actually, I'm not sure if you hear my I love you if you are. Probably gonna get a little personal here, but I actually said it before, but she actually recently admitted to me, like, probably like three months ago. I never knew this. But my mom told me that she actually was also assaulted. And here, I am the result. You know, so when... You talk about even, and listen, I understand a woman saying, I don't want to get raped and have to have a baby. That's, that's a very practical thing to not want right, to put yourself right. through. But, you know, again, as, 
you know, as people who understand life and <clears throat> especially if you're a believer, you just kind of understand that it, it really is these mysterious ways because thank God my mom, you know, still went through and, and had me regardless because we wouldn't be all here having this conversation today. Absolutely. You know, everybody wouldn't have been impacted by Harley Initiated <clears throat> and whatever else, you know, other impact I'm going to have further in this world. So it's a very touchy, you know, topic. Um, but I do understand, you know, the, the sentiments on both sides. I'm just not with it being birth control. As somebody who was a part of casual sex culture, and I know guys who still are, a lot of, a lot of us are literally having casual sex within mine as soon as if anything were to happen, the literally the next step is abortion. That's how we handle it. Mm -hmm. Abortion is the new condom, yep. unfortunately. And that's how it's being, you know, uh, how our culture has abused it. So it's, it's weird if you give our culture this leg up, you know, if you let people drink alcohol, now you're going to have alcoholics, you know, but do, do I ban alcohol? You know, like, how do we handle that? So it's a very tricky and touchy issue. Um, but D1, I didn't really get your, your, your thoughts yeah. on this one here. And we're going to come, we're going to circle back around, uh, Ryan, to the point that you had brought up prior. But D1, okay. what's your thoughts on this? For sure. Um, uh, I think uh, I think when when Anthony started out, he uh, he made a good point that that I've been uh, holding on to about. He was saying that you know he's not Christian because he he feels like yeah there's a lot of flip flopping on this issue and a lot of uh, 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 hypocritical um, dialogue around this issue inside of Christianity and I agree because I think that the problem with a lot of Christians when it comes to abortion is people want to try to legislate morality. And you can't legislate morality. Everyone who is on here trying to talk about, hey, uh, you know, abortion is something that people are just running to and if they got easy access to it, they're gonna do it. Like it's still a decision that they're making. And if people, as Christians, we have to, we have to not be so susceptible to saying, yeah, we just, we just feel like abortion is the problem because Prior to abortion, oftentimes, was premarital sex. But I don't hear anyone talking about fornication being the issue that we need to deal with. That's a matter of the heart. You feel me? That's a decision that people make that leads to them saying, oh, this casual sex led to where I'm having an abortion. And people tend to want to run to the legislation as the solution for something that's really a matter of the heart. And when we think about the Jesus that we serve, Jesus was about love. Jesus wasn't about um, think about think about God, God being omnipotent, omnipresent, and God creating us, right? If God wanted to, he could have saved himself a lot of headache and a lot of hurt by saying, I'm not going to give them free will. I'm not going to allow them to do what they want to do in life. I'm not going to allow them to make choices on a daily basis. I'm going to just create them, but they have to basically be robots the way I want them to be. But God allows us this free will. And with that being said, we think about that and it's like, okay, if God has given us free will, God is showing us that it's not about do the right thing according to the fact that I'm making you do it all the time. It's I want your heart to be to where even if you have the choice to sin on a daily basis, your love and admiration and surrendering of your free will to me, to my will, is what you want to push forward with. So that's the that's the God that we serve. And this is as a Christian, me speaking. And ironically, right before this, I just posted something on my Instagram page. And it was something that felt like a breath of fresh air in this super contentious time of election season. Even in the Christian community where a lot of Christians are at war with one another. A lot of people are just looking to get mad at another Christian. Like, wait, you're voting for this person? That means you're for killing babies. And it's like... Let's be honest, neither candidate is running on an agenda to say, hey, we want to totally, like, completely ban abortion, period. Like, abortion at any stage or any level is wrong. That's simply not a fact. But what I'm, what I'm wanting all Christians, anyone who is a believer, and that's why I respect what Anthony said earlier, because he's like, yo, I don't identify as Christian, so this might not apply to him. But this pastor named Brian Zion, he wrote something called the Christian Voters Guide because there's no way that Christians should start being at war with each other and beefed out behind, uh, you voted for this candidate, I voted for this candidate. Although we serve in the same Jesus, we can't coexist anymore. 
It shouldn't be like that. And I want to read y'all what he said for the Christian voters guy. This is extremely, extremely powerful. This is amazing. He said, number one, the political process, while necessary, has little to do with how God is saving the world. Number two, the fate of the kingdom of God does not depend upon political contests. Number three, don't be naive. Political parties are more interested in Christian votes than they are in Christian values. Uh -huh. Number four, the bottom line for political parties is power. The bottom line for a Christian is love, and therein lies the rub. Number five, while in pursuit of the ring of power, you are not permitted to abandon the Sermon on the Mount. Number six, if your political passion makes it hard for you to love your neighbor as yourself, you need to turn it down a notch. Number seven, your task is to bring the salt of Christian civility to an ugly and acrimonious political process. Number eight, to dismember the body oh. of Christ over politics is a grievous sin. Number nine, exercise your liberty to vote your conscience and conviction while accepting that other Christians will do the same and vote differently than you. And finally, number 10, it's more important that your soul be filled with love than it is for your political team to win the game. And that right there, as a Christian, that's something that really is important to make sure that we don't allow this process to make us feel like, if you're voting for this person, you're not Christian. Or if you're voting for this person, you don't love God the same way I love God because that means that you're you're for killing babies or you're for you you don't like this race or any of that stuff. It's something I'm to sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm getting lost. Yeah. It just feels like word salad. Like word salad, like yeah, hundred percent. On, on about word all these different things, and I, I can't really you're nail say, down you're what saying you're nothing. talking about. Uh, are you it's are you just, a Christian, Melanie? Just word are you a Christian? Salad. It's just are you a Christian? Talking about all Christian? this stuff, and it it really there's no concrete Melanie, point. Melanie, are you a it's Christian? Like Kamala, there's no Melanie, policy. Are you a Christian? It's just feel. It's just feel good language. Melanie, are you a Christian? Yes, I'm a Christian, born and raised, went to Christian school, went to Christian and, college. Like, and that was word. Like, this, 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 that is, this is why. And, with, and that, that was word. Hold nothing on. nothing to do with any of this. Everything that you said was some pastor giving word salad points that, in my opinion, really didn't nail down anything. Like, like, okay. like, like this move that's the, the problem. conversation that, ahead. That, that's the problem. it's not that's a problem. problem. You, you, that's the problem. What you me. just said, I... Does anybody even understand one point? His could anybody repeat back what he said, or does it sound like Kamala and one of her word salad uh, uh, that's, speeches? That's the problem, y'all. Listen, some of y'all unfortunately have turned this political race and these political parties and these candidates into idols to the point where y'all mentioned oh. Trump and y'all mentioned Jesus. But no, nah, it's not even about that. It's not even, it's it's not even about that. Hold on, hold on. Generalities about everybody oh. else. You seem to want to judge everybody else's Christianity oh. and their religious no. walk. That oh. is not I'm your place. Here, I'm but I need to use like a cogent point. Where their walk is think, or where their heart is or that they see that, Trump as Jesus. One Let's get to some real policy points and not this touchy-feely spiritual word salad that you're putting out there. It makes no sense. It's not moving the needle. Let's move on. Baby, my spirit is irritating your demons. That's no, it, the oh, oh, nah, hell yeah, nah, you but see, look, but look, no, 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 your demons, your demons, Melanie, Melanie, hold on, hold on, <laughs> keep playing. Oh Listen. my God, that's the problem. Okay. Literally, okay. wait, wait. I'm yeah. literally okay. saying how Christians need to stick together even amidst this, okay. and the first thing come out your mouth is. Word salad. That just don't even. It was word salad. But, but, but I can wait. keep it real. Do you you do you not want me to tell you truth, or do you want me to give you? Pain? Let's let's actually. I, I want to get to. Hold on, wait. Hold on, yeah. wait. Let's actually get to. Let's get to ABL. What's ABL. Biblical about what you just said, baby. What's biblical about? What okay, you I said? don't listen. This this is not a debate about my spirituality, my oh, Christianity. You're about These truth. are about the points you are taking There's it to only a place one when you've made things personal. You're asking people personal no. questions that are none of your business, and it has nothing to do with a political debate. Let us move on. This is not. How you, you conduct something, what and you I keep making you? personal judgments about people that you do not know. What this judgment? is not productive. What judgment? Hold on, wait, 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 let's, hold on, wait, 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 yeah. hold on, wait, hold, hold, hold tight, bad. hold tight, hold tight. Oh, no, tight. it's just that I, I, it was just he's so long-winded with this this thing, and I could not land down anything that he was saying. Man, it's welcome, just, it's welcome, just listen, word salad. welcome to welcome to what it feels like oh to listen to Donald Trump run for political. So, so hold on, wait, so so so, so, so hold, hold tight, hold, hold tight, real quick. 